This is a nomogram. What it does, it helps you see how your pro pre and post test probability, how your pre test probability and likelihood ratios changes your post test probability. Now, in an ideal world, you would know the pre test and the post test probability, or the pre test probability and the likelihood ratios for every condition and every test that you do, or every every test that you do for certain conditions. Obviously, this is not this is not realistic. And even if it's out there, you can't go scouring the literature for everything that you do. But you can have a good idea, and some you'll know better than others. And so what you want to do when you're doing an examination and even follow-up treatments is think about what are your pretest probabilities. So you want to think before you go into a patient, you should have a few ideas of differential diagnoses and what are their likelihoods of that. You know, the likelihood of a 20-year-old having hip pain and have it be doing the hip away is a lot lower than an 80 year old who's having hip pain, right? And so the pretest probability of the 20 year old is going to be, you know, maybe at the 2% or the 5% on, on the left there, right here. All right, let's see. You know, so it's right there. Now, if they had everything that was consistent with hip OA, your typical test item clusters, maybe it is, you know, it has a positive likelihood ratio of 100, it ends up with a, maybe a 70% chance. But the, the pretest probability is quite low, so you better have really good data to tell you that it's hip away for the 20 year old. But if it's an 80 year old, they come in with an image saying it's hip away, we can't be sure, it's not 100% that it's hip away, right? But you know, an 80 year old with hip pain that has imaging showing hip OA, are there symptoms from that? Let's say it's 90%. Now, if you, then if you, you know, test your ranges of motion, they don't have pain that is typical with a diurnal pattern of arthritis, oh, there's a lot of negative in there. So maybe it's a 0.02 likelihood ratio, now they have a 20% chance. Much more likely, though, is that internal rotation will be limited and painful. Same thing with flexion, extension. They may have a diurnal pattern. If so, then that probably has a likelihood ratio of maybe 10. So 90 to 10 puts it at like 98. You see that? So what you want to be doing is ruling up and down. Rarely can we rule, particularly musculoskeletal things, out or in. But we can rule up or down are like our post-test probabilities. And if a an, if an test is not going to change your post-test probability, then there's no reason to do it. So there's a lot of tests that we can choose from, a lot of special tests that we think can be fun to do or helpful or we learn them. But if no matter what you find there, positive or negative, if it doesn't change your post-test probability, there's no reason to do it for diagnosis purposes. There may be a reason to do it for primary impairments. There may be a reason to do it for secondary impairments, to know what other things may be helpful to work on. But when we're looking at diagnosis, and remember diagnosis is quite helpful to one, to guide treatment, two, to gauge prognosis. There's no reason to do it if it's not going, if we're looking specifically at diagnosis, there's no reason to do the test if it's not going to change your post-test probability. We may still do them for the impairments, but that, that we need to keep it separate in our minds why we're doing tests and very specific because we don't want to get bogged down by tests and try to interpret ones if we don't have nailed down the diagnosis first.